Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 39. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. Again, I know that it's called Bitcoin to be a mathematics, but as a reminder, this is of the entire cryptocurrency market capitalization. And the purpose of this video is to take a step back from the day-to-day -day price action and try to understand more so where the entire cryptocurrency asset class is in its overall journey. Now, the fundamental idea of these videos is that the fair value of the cryptocurrency asset class is increasing per a, a monotonic function. Therefore, the idea is that as a function of time, the, the asset class should trend higher. Now, on any given day or any given year, you know, obviously that will be debatable. But as you can see, when you zoom out, the, uh, the asset class as a whole tends to trend up with time. We go through periods of overvaluation and undervaluation, as you can see, where we go through pure euphoria and greed, and then we go into sort of the fear and, and depression phases. And one of the things that I've mentioned before is that I believe that we are in the midst of a secondary scare. Now, we've talked about this before. It tends to occur within the cryptocurrency asset class. We get our bear market year. We get our pre-having year rally. Then we fade it for the second half of the year, ultimately ending in some type of secondary scare uh, that can last cycle. It actually ended in a recession. Uh, this cycle, it could end in a recession. The cycle before that, it ended in a recession scare, not a recession. As of, and I know I normally do these videos on the first of the month, but... Um, and I'm actually making this on the first of the month. You will not see it until the second of the month because we had to do our wake me up when September ends video first. Uh, but as of September 1st, 2023, the fair value of the entire asset class has a modest 1.043 trillion, whereas the fair value is coming in at 2.11 trillion. This represents an undervaluation of approximately 50.57%. Now that might sound like a lot and arguably it is, but history shows us that we could theoretically go lower on these undervaluation territory. One of the things you'll note is that in, in 2015, we had, a double, we had a double bottom within the cryptocurrency asset class. And you can see that we didn't really kick off the real bull market until we hit that lower logarithmic regression trend line. Just like in, in the last cycle, we didn't really kick off the bull market that took us to new highs until we hit the lower logarithmic regression trend line. You might say, well, it didn't hit it, but this is only looking at daily closes. If you were to look at the, the full candle, the full wick, um, we actually did go all the way back down to this level. So that, that is something to keep in mind. And arguably, I, I think that it will likely happen once again. You know, if, if you... If, I mean, if we if we want to talk about how we get there, we either go sideways until we hit it or we go down until we hit it, right? If we were to go sideways until we hit it, you know, you're still talking about it taking until the summer of 2024 before we could even tag the lower green logarithmic regression trend line at this rate. If we go down, right, it, it, I mean, obviously we could hit it a lot sooner. The lower band is still several hundred billion below where we currently are. And it's just a humble reminder that the secondary scare is, is more about the time-based capitulation component more than anything else because prices in pre-having years for Bitcoin are normally relatively static. It might not feel that way because if you spend half the year going up, then everyone gets excited, but then you spend half the year going down, everyone gets depressed. But at the end of the year, oftentimes price might not really be that different from what we saw at the beginning of the year. Okay, so do keep in mind that pre-having years for Bitcoin are a way for both the bulls and the bears to get sufficiently wrecked. You go you go up long enough to give the bulls a false sense of security and to have them call for new all-time highs before the actual halving and before we get to more importantly quantitative easing, only for us to fade in the secondary in the second half of the year thanks to a seasonal correction in the S&P 500 that tends to occur in August or September of the pre-election year. And remember that even though we got a correction in the S&P 500, the S&P likes to climb the wall of worry until we go into a, a recession or until there's some other uh, weakening in the labor market. Now, we did get the unemployment rate coming in at 3.8%, and that might sound like a pretty big move up. But until we start printing in the fours and fives, I don't. I, I, it would be somewhat premature to assume that the market has priced in a recession. Recessions only get priced in once the labor market really starts to move up 
and and there has not been any clear indication of that yet, especially with initial claims still printing well below the 300,000 uh, level. And in fact, this last couple of weeks, it's actually been going back down. Do note though that in 2022, uh, initial claims bottomed out in September. So there might be some seasonality coming in here. We could see initial claims go back up into the end of the year, and that could usher in a recession sometime late this year or, or, or in early 2024, just like we had one in early 2020, just like we had a recession scare in early 2016. So remember that undervaluation is not just about the, 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 the price or the market cap. It's also about the reference point. If, if you look at this today, you'll notice that the total market cap is actually basically the same as it was you know, over a year ago. But we're more undervalued today than we were back then. If you were to look at the percent difference between the market cap and the red trend line, the red fair value trend line, you'll see that we're more undervalued today than we have been for the entire cycle since March of 2020. Right, the last time we were this undervalued, you'd have to go back pretty far, and then in 2015 as well, you have to go back pretty far. In 2020, we only spent a, a very brief period of time at, and and we still haven't reached it. Right, we'd still need to see this drop, you know, from around 50% undervaluation to more so like, um, you know, more so like 65% undervaluation, um, and we haven't seen that yet, but it is getting there. And, and you can see the cycle before that, we actually spent a lot of time there. I think it's more likely that we'll spend more time at, at these undervaluation levels than a quick move out of it like we saw in March of 2020. The reason for that is because arguably the reason that, that, that we, we rebounded so quickly in March of 2020 was because we got about $6 trillion printed uh, very quickly by the Federal Reserve. Unfortunately, with inflation as high as it is, uh, we're even watching the price of oil go up today. Um, and, I, and I believe putting in new yearly highs, that, that is going to, to continue to put pressure on, on the consumer, and, and therefore uh, the Fed will be forced to stay higher for longer in their interest rates. Um, and, I, I, and then I think it'll lead to, to sort of a, a, a period like this, which would be akin to the depression phase of the market cycle. And I think we're heading into that in the back half of this year. Um, as, as sort of the months slowly press on. It doesn't mean that every day has to be read or even every month, but I would not be surprised if three of the next four months were, were just red months for Bitcoin. Um, it, you know, we could have a red September and then a green October and then a, a red November, December. We could have a red September, a red October, a red November, and then a green December, right? But the point is, is, is we are likely to spend some time at these lower undervaluation levels just like we did over here in 2015 and 2016 and if you look at it you know arguably from this perspective it, it it looks a lot more similar to this over here than perhaps this one over here where we went overvalued for a couple of months remember back in 2019 bitcoin went up about 4x or so from at least the 2018 bottom whereas this cycle bitcoin only went up 2x and remember in 2015, it, it rallied about 90% and then it ended up finding a double bottom. And so you could have this example where, you know, the asset class goes back down and, 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 and Bitcoin, you know, goes back down to where it previously was. But the altcoin market is just completely a shell of its former self because it got wrecked um, in the bear market. It then, it then usually is not able to keep up with Bitcoin in a rally in the pre-having year, and then it just gets wrecked again when Bitcoin comes back down. And that should lead to the finalization of the altcoin reckoning sometime later this year or early next year is my guess. If, if we do go into a recession and, and people capitulate their alts because they finally think, okay, the recession's finally here, that means that the altcoin market is, is um, it's going to keep going down. Do note that that might be a false um, sort of reasoning because oftentimes, as we've said, the, the altcoin market is more so a function of excess liquidity than anything else. And if we do go into a recession, then the Federal Reserve will likely be forced to start some form of QE, and therefore the altcoin market could bottom out early on in the recession. Remember, the stock market tends to bottom out um, you know, in the recession, not after the recession, because the market, the market is often forward looking. So my expectation is that the S&P climbs the wall of worry until we start really going into recessionary territory. Uh, crypto is likely in a, in a downtrend for the rest of the year, and, and we'll likely revisit the lower logarithmic regression trend line at some point. And, and after we do, 
then perhaps we can talk about going into a more sustained bull run that'll take us to overvaluation territory in 2024 and 2025. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Remember the view of these of these videos, the, the general, the, 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 um, the theme is that cryptocurrency, the asset class as a whole is in fact, is, is in fact heading to 10 trillion, which is this line right up here. So it's it, this this horizontal line, right? I, I do believe it's going to 10 trillion here in the coming years. Uh, whether we hit it this cycle or not, it, you know, will, will obviously remain up for debate. But I do believe we are going to 10 trillion plus or minus a few trillion. As we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder what's a few trillion dollars among friends. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.